Hello everyone and today we're going to be doing a personal wish list of mine for update features and DLCs for Planet Zoo. Now there are many animals that we currently don't have in Planet Zoo and we may never get depending on how long the game's going to continue going for. And a bunch of update features that could further improve the game to become the, the very best zoo game that we could potentially have in our lifetimes. So let's go straight into our first DLC. So the first DLC is the Latin America Animal Pack. It's about time that we take another journey to the diverse region of Latin America. In the jungles, wetlands, plains and mountains are like 12 new animals that cannot be found anywhere else. Meet the curious South American Kawati, the stealthy ocelot, the roaring black howler monkey, acrobatic Joffroy spider monkey, the mysterious spectacled bear, the quirky Greater Rhea and the bizarre Patagonia Mara, and making their way into the walkthrough exhibits fly a colourful variety of South American macaws. One species, the highest of macaw, is the largest of all the parrots. In a new mission, you will join the aspiring Tiffany Summers on a task set by your mentor, Bernie Goodwin, to establish a rainforest facility in Ecuador, situated in the biggest jungle of all, the mighty Amazon. As for the animals, they will be ambassadors for the diversity of species that live in the Amazon and across Latin America, bringing to the local public's attention the importance of biodiversity in a rainforest and across the Latin American region. A few update features that we could see would be a set of new faux rocks to resemble sort of the um, SEM rock displays that you see in a lot of modern zoo exhibits as well as more artificial tree pieces to be able to create larger artificial trees and more logs and overhanging dead trees. The sort of things that you see in a lot of great ape enclosures these days. Metal guest gates would also be a great addition for walks to enclosures of varying heights, even glass sliding doors would be cool. Allowing monitor lizards to climb as well as giving the Nile monitor the ability to deep dive and giving tapirs the ability to deep dive underwater as well. However, this feature could also be translated into the Asian water buffalo and moose as well. The addition of more path types, characteristic of current zoos with some pathways able to have their railings, curbs and actual materials changed by the player would be great as well. Further improvement to the path system can be seen in Zoo Tycoon 2, with the ability to create simple paths that could easily snap to the very edge of an enclosure barrier, as well as also being dynamic enough to fill in un unsightly space between the paths even allowing us to manipulate the terrain and have the path match it. This can give us a more, give players more freedom in how we lay our zoos out. And Prehistoric Kingdom even has paths much more flexible than Planet Zoo because the paths right now have a serious hitbox problem where you can't actually fill in gaps that easily without having to change the whole path. Zoo Tycoon 2, you didn't really have that problem. So I'd certainly like to see that added to the game. And the addition of more dead trees and logs in various shapes for animals to use would be great as well, as you can see with this jaguar. And renaming the tark into the Sichuan tark to be a lot more specific to the actual, uh, species, the actual subspecies that we have in the game would be a very good step. The Northern Frontier Animal Pack is our next DLC. Pull on your warm weather gear as we make for the north of America with the Northern Frontier Animal Pack. This takes players from the northwest of America all the way to the Arctic Tundra to meet seven important and iconic species of the North American continent. Encounter species of the Pacific Northwest like the adaptable North American black bear found across the continent, as well as the iconic elk with its bugle-like call, and the graceful sea otter specialized for life in the kelp forest. Then travel up to the Arctic to observe the magnificent muskox with its shaggy coat and its powerful headgear, as well as the hulking walrus with its distinctive tusks and thick blubber to survive in the cold. Then back down south to the northern woodlands to meet the wild turkey, and look in the trees for the North American porcupine, better adapted for climbing than its old world cousins. Also make use of a set of pieces inspired by Native American architecture and that of the log cabins and lodges found across the United States. Join Bernie Goodwin on a trip to the Canadian province of British Columbia to establish a new sanctuary for both animals of the coastal forests and from high up in the Arctic in neighbouring provinces. Creating a sanctuary for animals from across North Northern America's northern regions for the people to see just how diverse some of the wildlife can be in just a single concentrated area of the continent. 
It isn't every day that you can have a paddock of muskox next to a pool of sea otters. Some of the features that I would certainly like to see is a new enrichment feature that I thought of, which is a cascading waterfall fishing enrichment for bears. However, it could also be used by otters too, where the animals catch a fish in a pool and take it to the side of the pools between the falls to eat. So you could actually have salmon or trout leaping up the waterfalls and the bears can be waiting at, at the edge of the waterfalls and catching them like in BBC documentaries that you see them doing. Log cabin and lodge pieces with cobblestone columns would also be great additions. Some new foliage could include the western hemlock and western sword fern. Mineral lix is a, a very commonly used enrichment item for many undulates as salt is important in their diet and so zoos will give them either some salt or just a simple um, block of different minerals to enrich their diets. This would be a cool enrichment to add in for many of our hoof stock. A slide for otters and pinnipeds would also be a great addition to put at the, slide, uh, at the side of our lagoons where they swim. So I think that would be pretty cool. Giant and bullwhip kelp among other aspects of the coastlines of the Pacific Northwest would be very cool as a new feature to decorate our sea lion and sea otter habitats. And lastly, Native American architecture to li liven up the amount of scenery that would be in this pack. Because I, I did take a bit of inspiration from the Barnyard Animal Pack when designing this one. Next up, the Primates Animal Pack. Have you ever wanted to explore your evolutionary roots? Well, that aspiration can come true with the Primates Animal Pack, with 12 new species of our close cousins to interact with. It is about time we met the charismatic Cockerel Safaka of Madagascar, the silver-haired Hamadryas baboon of the Horn of Africa, the inquisitive Guyana squirrel monkey of Central and South America, the striking mantle Jeriza of the East African forests, the intriguing lion-tailed macaque of Indian forests, the elusive Francois Langer of the Vietnamese mountains, with its bright orange young that make it a striking addition, the distinctive white-faced Saki of the Amazon, as well as a range of different monkeys of the Calatricidae family, consisting of the marmosets and tamarins that are found across South America, such as the instantly recognisable golden lion tamarind. Join Bernie Goodwin and Tiffany Summers on this unique opportunity to learn more about primates as a group from the apes, monkeys and prosimians of the world. Set up a new primate sanctuary set in the warmth of the Spanish forest to show people that a monkey is not simply a monkey and give the public a deeper understanding of primate diversity. A modular mesh piece set with metal poles and cables to create dynamic roofing and enclosures for a variety of animals would be a fantastic feature. And this is certainly a more popular and common way that enclosures are built to house climbing animals these days. Adding them as a new barrier would be cool as well, and perhaps adding a setting for the enclosure to have a roof made of mesh would be implemented as well to automatically generate the steel bar connections and columns. If there was an option to add or remove extra columns that can be adjusted in different points to give the exhibit a series of various heights, that would be pretty cool as well. There could also be as many shape varieties in the mesh piece set as those of the art shapes. But I'm particularly leaning towards that ceiling setting feature as it's much more flexible than just having to place the thing piece by piece. And when I said like add it as a barrier, I mean like you'd be able to change the shape, whether it be inverted inwards, inverted outwards, uh, or outverted in that case. Um, but you can see in some of the examples I have here, like the Sumatran tiger exhibit at Taronga Zoo and the African rocks. I think that's the Madagascar section at San Diego Zoo. That sort of thing is what I'm sort of leaning towards. An addition of zero line ropes would be a very cool feature as well. These ropes would be stretched from points for apes to use. So basically put them on the column and you'd stretch them and join them to an, an opposite column. So that would be a pretty cool feature and they could come in a variety of different forms such as single line and others having two for the apes like gibbons and orangutans to both swing and walk, walk along. The columns that these ropes meet would have points where the apes can rest and in a sunshade. They could come in different styles as well but this would help give our zoos a modern feel. A set of pieces to be used for tunnel pathways over the guest path would be great additions as well, with a variety of shapes and sizes and materials. This could potentially be a similar strategy um, for the overhead ropes and columns 
with these tunnels, stretching from a point on a barrier to the next barrier over for primates, cats, and arboreal animals to move over the guests to another exhibit. They could also be made of glass, plastic, mesh, all sorts of things. In addition of hammocks, uh, well, sort of like modular hammocks that can be like these ropes stretched from different points to create a much larger hammock than you generally would, would be a great alternative resting spot for many different primates, like this white cheek gibbon that you can see in the image in the bottom right. Next up, the equatorial animal pack. Ah, the equator, the warm middle line around our planet. And within this area exists tropical forests, grasslands, deserts, all that are home to a great diversity of species, including eight new animals in the equatorial animal pack. Found from the plains of East Africa, the forests of the Indian subcontinent and Madagascar, the mountains of New Guinea and the jungles of the Amazon. Come across exciting species such as the peculiar secretary bird, the bizarre goodfellow's tree kangaroo, the fearsome honey badger, the mighty gower, the tree-dwelling southern tamandua, the excitable black buck, the fascinating fishing cat, and the striking panther chameleon. Travel to the forests of northwestern India with Tiffany Summers to establish a wildlife preserve that aims to educate on the importance of forces around the equator and how it maintains just the wet and dry seasons, and how adaptable animals must be to survive these conditions. Given that this is sort of like the open range uh, pack, I would like to see the addition of keeper vehicles such as carts, buggies, um, maybe even cars, trucks, and uh, even forklifts would be interesting as well. All sorts of keeper transport would be very good to get staff members to different areas of the park much quicker. Tram rides and zoo buses would also be very cool to give guests a different perspective on animals in the zoo and allow them to see a whole a, a greater range of zoo, um, zoo animals in a closer proximity. Guest transport such as bikes and carts would also be very, very good as these would somewhat be first person so the guests would go to a, a let, let's just say a, a sort of kiosk and they hire a, a bike or a cart to take around the zoo. This is something that Taronga's Western Plains Zoo in Australia does where guests are able to take around a cart or a bike around the zoo and explore on their own. I think that would be very cool for getting guests around a big zoo much quicker. Modular functional solar panels would also be very good as the solar panels we have right now are not as flexible as you'd probably like them to be as you you have to place them as a single facility. You can't just place these different ones on your roof and make it look like how they're actually used most of the time. I think that would be very a very good feature to improve how power is distributed in our zoos as well. More specific to the animals, new feeder types would be a great addition as well. Sort of feeders that are mounted on walls would be very cool. So different carnival feeders, different giraffe feeders, and a variety of feeders for hoofstock and primates as well. I think that would just be a very cool way to give animals a, a more modern way of feeding them as some of the feeders that uh, that we have right now are sort of the general ways you'd feed your animals whereas some of these would be a much more exciting way and you'd be able to do more with them like you could blend some of these mounted feeders into a guest shelter so the animals when they need to feed they come up right to the guests. Uh, modular sunshades for animals as well that, those would function like the hammocks and um, mesh pieces I suggested earlier that would be very cool for creating more outdoor shade that looks more characteristic of many modern zoos where they house elephants and rhinos and many other large animals dust bathing points and enclosures would be very cool as well to encourage that sort of behavior from our undulates like our zebras our bison and all sorts of other animals this is more specific to the secretary bird have the honey badger could use this as well a fake snake enrichment item would be very cool. So the snake sort of like is attached to a string that's attached to a pole and a secretary bird or honey badger approaches it and starts to have a tussle with it. That would be very cool for getting their natural hunting mechanisms working. A fishing pool for the fishing cats and bears and potentially even the otters as well would be a very cool feature to encourage this animal to do what it was evolved to do. And a honey feeder would be a much not a much needed bonus for the honey badger as 
honey's in the name and the honey would also be for any other animals that have a sweet tooth like our sun bear next we have the east asia animal pack we return to asia to explore the forests mountains and wetlands in the east asia animal pack with nine new species to enrich your zoos with color and to highlight the rare gems that live in this part of the great asian continent in China, Japan, and the Korean Peninsula. Head to the mountains of Sichuan province to catch a glimpse of the golden snub-nosed monkey with its bright orange fur and bright blue face. To the lowland forest to find the shy tanuki, and in the highlands find the elusive Japanese sorrel. Head down to the stream to find the beautiful mandarin duck and the shining feathers of the golden pheasant in the forest clearing. On the banks of the Yangtze, find the rare and prehistoric looking Chinese alligator. And back in the forest, finally, Reeves Montjack with the males sporting a pair of short tusks that resemble saber teeth. Then looking down into the dark montane rivers of both China and Japan to find the two species of endangered giant salamander. Well, two of the endangered giant salamander species, the largest amphibians on Earth. Trek into the forested mountains of Chengdu in the Sichuan province to begin a sanctuary for giant pandas, red pandas, and a variety of other local wildlife to put the colours of Asia on full display and give local people a taste of the great diversity of wildlife that lives in Eastern Asia. Some features that we could see added would be giving crocodilians the ability to rest underwater. I feel like it's a good opportunity now, considering this would be a new crocodile. Uh, or crocodilian to add this feature in as just adding it randomly wouldn't really be um, wouldn't, wouldn't work in, as well in my opinion larger exhibits as well particularly for these giant salamanders that can reach over two meters in length would be a, a necessary addition whether it's just for the giant salamanders or also for some of some of the larger exhibit animals that we currently have like the iguanas and anaconda that, that would be pretty cool as well Giving pangolins the ability to climb would also be a great feature, considering we only have the Chinese pangolin, I felt like it fit here. Guest binoculars to see further in large habitats would be great as well. A group resting feature would be very cool as well, as in the wild, golden snub-nosed monkey families will often huddle together for warmth. And you can see this with many other animals in zoos where they'll lie together. So you can see that with a crash of rhinos or meerkats and various other animals as well. Proper bird courtship displays would be pretty cool as well. Um, uh, particularly with the ostrich, we don't really see it do its iconic like um, swiveling courtship display. And given that we're adding the mandarin duck and golden pheasant, two animals that are well known for their bright colors and displays, that would be pretty cool to see as well. And just a, another note, um, allow the tanuki to climb trees as it is one of the only um, semi-arboreal canids. So I think that would just that's just, I think it's just important to mention it here in case it were to be forgotten that they can climb. Next, the mountains animal pack. In the mountains animal pack, we take a hike into the mountains of Eurasia, Africa, and Australia to find eight species specialized to life in these high altitude environments. From the Kashmir Mountains of India is the majestic Markor. The Bale and Siamian Mountains of Ethiopia comes to the impressive gelada. The Swiss Alps are home to the adorable alpine marmots, and the Drakensberg Mountains of South Africa house the peculiar rock hyrax. On the dry plains of the Tibetan Plateau lives the elusive palace's cat and the magnificent Tibetan yak, while on the slopes of the Himalayas lives the beautiful Himalayan Manau. And in the moisture-rich slopes of Australia's snowy mountains dwells the southern Corroboree frog, one of the most endangered amphibians in Australia. Take a trip to the French Alps to establish a park specialized for mountain living wildlife to display both the wide range of animals, but also the vul vulnerability of their mountain habitats to changes in our climate and how that can affect just how high these animals are able to survive in the mountains. Some features I would like to see would be sentry points and habitats for animals like the meerkats, prairie dogs, marmots, and hyraxes. I think this would just be a very cool feature to add as you can often see a, at least one meerkat on sentry at a zoo at a time. 
cliff pieces for goats like ibex and markor, as well as animals like hyraxes, geladas and baboons would also be very cool, allowing them to climb on near vertical faces. A revised gondola ride would also be a very cool addition as well, and other variants of guest attractions to better fit the more modern aesthetic of many zoos these days. Um, some particular guest features would be elevators, escalators, revolving doors and automatic sliding doors just to allow guest flow to be a bit quicker and also allow guests to get to different heights and elevations much quicker. The Nocturnal Animal Pack Get out your torches for a nighttime adventure with the Nocturnal Animal Pack. Introducing 14 new species specialized for life in the dark. Tapping its long bony finger along a Madagascan tree trunk is the bizarre eye eye, while hanging from the branches in the jungles of Latin America is the kinkajou searching for pollen. Striding through some southern African grass slinks the secretive serval, while in the savannah scrub an African civet wanders around searching for an easy meal. Inside the hollowed out trunk of a great gum tree is a brush tail possum while out of a burrow in, a, in desert sand emerges a greater bilby. In the forests of North America, a Virginia opossum hangs with its prehensile tail. In the new standalone exhibits of the Nocturnal House, a pygmy slow loris clambers through the branches as a common vampire bat flies down to a dish of fresh blood. Licking its eye while stuck to the glass window is the colorful toke gecko. Meandering through its underground complex is the naked mole rat. Gliding through the branches is the diminutive sugar glider. Hanging out in a nest rests the Lynn's two-toed sloth. And out of a nest of twigs in a tree scopes a northern greater Galago. Join Bernie Goodwin for a unique opportunity to uncover the secrets of nocturnal life with a variety of animals from around the world to show off their different adaptations for living in the dark. Get up a, uh, set up a nighttime only animal experience in the forest of Yorkshire. Give visitors a proper introduction to the diverse range of bizarre animals that dominate the nightscape while others are fast asleep. Some new nests and nest boxes would be very cool features as well for many of the animals that generally sleep during the day like the possums and kinkajous. Log feeders for the anteaters to break into to find their favourite foods would also be a very cool feature. The IR hunting mechanism would be great thing to be reflected in the game in a unique enrichment item, as well as a nocturnal building set to block out the light that somehow still gets into our buildings when we put up walls. A, some standalone nocturnal exhibits of various sizes for small nocturnal species would be very cool as well, allowing these animals to do, be displayed on their own and be kept in the dark as they generally would be. Many of the animals I mentioned that would be in these exhibits that uh, were that bottom line of animals. Those, uh, those would be the ones in these exhibits, and I think that would just be a very cool feature to give a more realistic nocturnal house aesthetic. Ambassador animals would also be a great feature to add in, as animals like kinkajous, binturongs and possums would often be brought around by keepers, and I think that would just be a very cool thing to see in the game. Hollow logs and recycled concrete pipes for animals to sleep in would be some very cool rustic features that many Australian zoos in particular use and I know some zoos around the world will also use these as shelters for their animals. Some possible anniversary animals that could make it into the game that I think would make some valuable additions would be the Nile Crocodile as we currently lack an African Crocodilian. Not to mention we have not received a true Crocodile in any DLCs. We've only been receiving Crocodilians of the Alligator family and Caimans. Next is the Sumatran tiger, the smallest of the living tiger subspecies and by far one of the most exhibited tigers in captivity behind the Amur or Siberian tiger. And is certainly a must for the game in my personal opinion as these are my favourite tigers. The Grevy zebra is the largest of the wild equids and largest zebra in the world. It is also endangered and bears a distinct difference from the current grant or plain zebra. The Maasai Giraffe would make a great addition to the game, giving players the opportunity to use an alternate species of giraffe, and it is also the tallest of the giraffes with a distinct pattern from the current reticulated. African Leopards would be a really great addition to the roster, as they are the last of the African Big Five to be added to the game, and are also a very versatile leopard in terms of how you can display them. You could 
give them a whole range of exhibits, being a subspecies perfectly adapted to living in grasslands, deserts, tropical rainforests, and temperate forests. The Parenti would be a great addition to the Australian roster, being the continent's and all of Oceania's largest lizard, and it would be a great it would be great to see the detail that was applied to the Asia water monitor be translated into the Parenti to create a truly stunning reptile. The African Spurred or Solcata tortoise is an iconic species of the Sahel region of Africa and is the third largest of tortoises and it doesn't reside on an island for a change like the current habitat tortoises and it would be a great species to mix with other animals that reside in similar habitats on mainland Africa. The Aodad or Barbary sheep is another great species I'd like to see added and they are a species commonly displayed alongside the dromedary camel, at least in my experience and I think would be another great addition to the roster as well. And it would be our first base game Caprine. And so the Our Dad would be my top choice for that. My final consideration for an anniversary animal would be the Asiatic Lion, the only living subspecies of lion outside of Africa, only residing in India's Gur Forest National Park. It is a common sight in many European institutions and would be another great big cat to see added into the roster. The Zookeeper Collection Animal Pack is my first consideration for a sort of finale DLC. The only good way to a zoo's collection is the diversity of animals in that collection. The Zookeeper Collection Animal Pack delivers players a diverse range of 35 species commonly found in zoos around the world, and also rarities that zoos are very privileged to house. And some species add more life to multi-species exhibits as well with species like the egg-laying echidna to the behemoth that is the northern elephant seal. The galloping Cuban crocodile and iconic king cobra are just a few of the species that would be in this pack. Other species include the prehistoric tuatara, the adaptable coyote, regal Sumatran tiger and an endangered numbat that could all make an appearance. As for the campaign scenario, Bernie Goodwin has purchased a large parcel of land in the English countryside just a few miles from his home to house more species he would like to start breeding programs for and bring some unheard of species into the public eye. So you can see a whole variety of different species I've placed here. Many of them were the uh, anniversary animal considerations and many were sort of the leftover uh, highly requested animals that I saw on the wish list and some I just felt were some necessary additions as I think they are different enough from many current species and would be relatively easy to make compared to others as well. Animal remasters for the base game and deluxe edition as well as the first two years of DLCs to make the animals overall better resemble their real life counterparts while also establishing balanced quality across all species. As for a long time now, we've had a, 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 very a very noticeable imbalance in the quality of animals across Planet Zoo. So like you, you have animals like the Wyzen from the Eurasia Animal Pack looking leagues ahead of the American Bison that we got in the base game. So I think this would just be a very good feature. Some notable, some notable mentions I would like to put here would be all the wild cats and particularly how their faces look as well as the bears, the red panda, canids, hyenas, American bison, among various others. And also make the male California sea lion um, much bigger than the females as they are currently around the same size. Now alternatively, we have the much requested avian animal pack. And honestly, in comparison to that zookeeper collection animal pack, if it were to look like that and we got all the DLCs before it, I would probably prefer this. Birds of a feather flock together. Welcome to the Avian Animal Pack, a pack that introduces 35 birds from around the world, from the jungles, grasslands, deserts, temperate forests, taiga, wetlands and coastlines, all to be housed within aviaries and alongside many of our current zoo animals. Say hello to species like the intimidating shoebill, the colourful South American duo of the roseate spoonbill and scarlet ibis, the flamboyant American flamingo, speedy greater roadrunner and the fish swallowing great white pelican to name a couple of these terrestrial birds. 
but as well as these comes a plethora of flying birds as well to live in the new aviaries and the walkthrough exhibits to add a dash of colour to the zoo landscape. Species include the instantly recognisable bald eagle and taiko toucan, as well as iconic birds like the laughing kookaburra and budrigar. Bernie and Emma Goodwin and Tiffany Summers are working to set up a bird theme park in northern Germany to give these living dinosaurs room to spread their wings. Through this park, the Goodwins and Summers hope to show the world just how incredible birds as a group are and how diverse they have become over the last 150 million years of their existence using great aviaries and free flying bird presentations. So when choosing these flying birds, I went on to the Avery Bird wish list over on the forums, and I picked largely the most requested animal um, species in those groups of birds. However, it also came down to how recognisable some of these birds are. So the most requested vulture was actually the Lamagaya or bearded vulture. And I felt, no, it's, it's not really as... It may be very peculiar and unique in its appearance, but it's not really the kind of animal you think of when you think of a vulture. So I instead went with the second most requested, the Eurasian Griffin Vulture. Um, and for the owls, I picked the Snowy Owl initially, and it is of course the most requested of the owls. But then I thought we needed a more general owl. Um, so I picked the Eurasian Eagle Owl, as that is a species often displayed in a variety of different exhibits, like Jungle World in the in the Bronx Zoo, I, I think. I think it was Jungle World, I can't quite recall. It was an indoor rainforest of some kind. Oh, maybe it was Lee Jungle in, at Omaha's Henry Dooley, that could, that could be it. Um, but basically we just needed a generalistic looking owl. And other species like the Inca Tern and Barley Minor, Victoria Crown Pigeon, Ruby Throat Hummingbird, Ragiana Bird of Paradise. There were just so many species that I had to choose from and I picked my favourites, the, the ones that I thought would make the, the most diverse roster. And Great Blue Taracos in here as well for some African representation. But there are of course uh, many that you could alternate for others, but these were just my picks. A penguin jumping hole would also be a great addition here. This lets the penguins get onto the land much faster from deep water. Perch points on trees and rocks for the birds would be vital for giving these animals a unique presence in the zoos where they're able to be almost anywhere. Avery exhibit buildings would also be a great feature. The macaws from the Latin America Animal Pack would be able to be placed in exhibits like this. However, it would be also great to go a step further and allow all these birds to be somewhat free roaming. And with the mesh roofs I discussed back with the Primates DLC update, they could function more as habitats than as aviaries and could be a very solid alternative to this feature. Raised feeders for birds would also be a very cool feature as well, as well as path railings that allow for birds to be perched on them. Arboreal paths would also be great here as like just these paths that you can see at like um, place like Bird Paradise to have the metal railings and the mesh uh, and I think the wooden floor as well I think those would be the perfect paths to add alongside this. A free flying bird presentation like those seen in zoos around the world would be great to show the birds flying and expand on the keeper talks by also applying something similar for other species creating a full animal presentation where the keepers bring in animals from around the zoo to show off their amazing adaptations. Some other shows that we could see could be things like a proper crocodile feeding. I think that would be a very cool feature to um, show off what Australia Zoo does so well. Um, and even a seal presentation would be very cool. Not like the um, spins and tricks that uh, marine parks do, but sort of something more akin to what Taronga Zoo does with their seals for the wild presentation, where it's more about conservation rather than getting these these seals to do cheap tricks. I think that would just be a very cool feature as well. And there you have it. Woo wee, that was a okay, that was a long video. So many DLC ideas. I think that's eleven? I wanna say eleven DLCs that I came up with right there. But uh, the update features as well would probably be somewhat more important, although when it comes to a zoo game it's about getting a, a lot of animals as well. And some of these 
DLCs I've probably added too many animals, but given many in the in the Nocturnal Animal Pack in particular were exhibit species, I think that would be very good as well um, for getting more species into the game. However, when it came to the Primates DLC, I'd just like to clarify that those Calatricidae monkeys, the Tamarins and Marmosets, I'm not uh, <laughs> saying that they should be in exhibits, rather that if we were to get one, we should just get a variety as they are so diverse compared to others. And yeah, so that was all my all my packs. And yeah, let me know what you let me know what your wish list of Plans Who DLCs would be and what updates would come alongside them. As the game still has so much potential, even though it seems to be coming to somewhat of an end, as we still have not gotten any news on the next DLC. But then again, it hasn't quite been three months yet, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Who knows, maybe next week we'll actually get some news, so I guess we'll have to find out. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like, and yeah, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.